So all the fighters, the main events on the show, Guerrero, Berto, Thurman, and Carlos Quintana. That's going to be at the Westside Boxing Club in Los Angeles. And Tuesday, there will be a final press conference at the JW Marriott Los Angeles LA Live. So those two events normally take place Wednesday, Thursday. This next week will be Monday, Tuesday. Then we'll take a break, and on Friday we will have the official weigh-in, and that will be at Dave & Buster's in Ontario, close to the site of the fight at the Citizens, near the Citizens um, Bank Arena. Um, so please watch for your fight week schedule. It's going to be distributed, and we look forward to your coverage on that. And now at this time I'm going to turn this over to Oscar De La Hoya, who will introduce the fighters. Oscar? Thank you very much, uh, Kelly. Uh, yes, we have uh, Berto versus Guerrero. It's a very exciting main event. It will be 12 rounds for the uh, WBC welterweight uh, world title. We also have, uh, as a co-main event, uh, Keith Thurman versus Carlos Quintana, which will be a 10-round uh, uh, junior middleweight fight. Uh, this event is promoted by Golden Boy Promotions, and the sponsors are Corona and AT&T. You know, we're very, very excited, uh, you know, putting this fight together uh, uh, was was a a, a no-brainer. Uh, you know, you have uh, Robert the Ghost Guerrero, who, who is an exciting uh, uh, champion, who is willing to fight the best, who is moving up weight divisions and, and conquering the best and, and, and fighting the toughest guys out there. Uh, and really showing uh, his skills and what he's really all about inside that squared circle. And then you have uh, Andre Berto, who comes out with everything to fight. I mean, he has talent, he has speed, he's explosive. So this this fight really should be, uh, um, you know, has fireworks written all over it. Um, you know, we we uh, we feel that. Uh, uh, the Citizens uh, Business Bank Arena in Ontario will be uh, uh, an electric crowd uh, on that night, um, which will be uh, televised uh, live on HBO World Championship Boxing beginning at 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, uh, tickets are priced. Tickets are priced uh, ringside for $200, $100, $75, $50, and $25. Tickets are still available, but going fast. Um, so I urge you, go out there. This is a great fight. Thanksgiving uh, week, uh, you know, I believe uh, these two great warriors uh, are just going to give it all inside that squared circle. So at this uh, moment, I would uh, like to introduce to you uh, the two-time uh, Walter Waite uh, world champion, um, you know, at 29 years old, who competed in uh, the 2004 uh, um, uh, Olympics uh, um, for Haiti. Uh, he's obviously well known for his charity efforts in, in Haiti, uh, especially in the wake of uh, the devastating uh, earthquake in 2010, uh, which he immediately after, uh, you know, uh, immediately after. Uh, you know, spent time uh, assisting uh, in recovery efforts. Um, he won his first world title uh, in 2008 uh, with a seven-round uh, technical knockout over uh, Miguel Angel Rodriguez, and he's uh, he successfully defended it uh, five times uh, before having a tremendous, tremendous fight of the year battle versus uh, Victor Ortiz, and. You know, the warrior he is, the champion he is, he's bounced back uh, in his next fight with a fifth-round knockout stoppage over uh, John Zavik uh, in September of 2011. So uh, without any further ado, I would like to introduce to you to say a few words uh, with a record of 28-1 and one and 22 knockouts out of uh, Winter Haven, Florida, Andre Berto. And how you doing, um... I want to say thank you for everybody that's on the call today. Um, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good showing. You know, we've been, uh, we've been training our asses off, the you know, down here in Florida. We've been having a tremendous training camp, and um, and I'm, in, I'm excited about it. 
and it's going to be, uh, you know, I mean, just like Oscar said, it's going to be, uh, you know, some fireworks come fight night, uh, November 24th. So it's going to be, it's going to be a good one. Thank you very much, uh, Andre. And uh, now to introduce to you uh, uh, the former, uh, the former uh, six-time uh, four-division uh, world champion. Um, you know, he uh, he's obviously one of the best uh, fighters uh, in, inside that squared circle today. Um, we obviously uh, uh, know him for his uh, charity work uh, in his community um, uh, with the uh, LLS.org, uh, which is the uh, Leukemia uh, Lymphoma Society. Um, you know, at 29 years old, um, you know, he has put together wins over uh, Roberto Arieta, uh, the Cuban legend uh, Casamayor. He defeated uh, Olympian Vicente Escobedo, had a great, tremendous win over Michael Katsidis. And, uh, you know, he's rapidly, he's rapidly, uh, you know, uh, um, climbing that ladder, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the pound for pound list. Um, he had a very, very impressive uh, win in his last fight against then undefeated uh, 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 Deluca Aydin, um, which he won the uh, WBC interim welterweight world uh, title. Um, here's a young man who wants to fight the best in order to become the best, uh, willing to take all comers, and uh, this fight here with Andre Berto is is, is a, a dangerous fight for both of them, but that's that's really what these guys are all about. It's, it's fighting the best and giving the fans uh, um, the, the best show possible. So let me introduce to you with a record of 31 and 1 with 18 knockouts out of Gilroy, California, Robert the Ghost Guerrero. Hey, thank you, Oscar. Um, I just want to thank everybody that's uh, on the call. Um, thank God for the blessings he blesses us with. And, uh, no, I'm excited for this fight. Can't wait to get out there. Uh, we got a week left. So, uh, man, I'm just chomping at the bit. All the hard work's done. Now it's just, uh, all that's left is to go in there and fight. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Now we, uh, open it up for, uh, questions from the media. If you would like to ask a question or have a comment, please press star one on your telephone keypad. This will place your question in the order it was received. Again, if you would like to ask a question or have a comment, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad now. All right, and our first question is coming from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Hello, everybody. Hey, Andre, how are you today? Yeah. You there, Andre? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, uh, my question for you is, uh, you know, uh, as Oscar talked about in his introductory remarks about uh, the excellent performance that Robert had uh, a couple months ago when he fought against Selkuk Aydin, uh, that was his first fight at welterweight. I wondered if you saw that and, and what your take was on that fight, seeing him uh, maybe having known about him when he was, you know, featherweight champion and a junior lightweight, lightweight, but then how he looked fighting at a, at a much heavier weight than he'd ever fought at before. Yeah, I was there. You know, actually, I was there at the fight. I had to go with, uh, you know, was to actually go there and do some things with the commission. So I was actually there at the fight. And, and, and he, like I said, I think he put on a good performance. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, like I said, I mean, uh, you know, me and ID, you know, we're two completely different fighters. Um, you know, ID, um, uh, you know, just basically, you know, kept his hands tight and just changed his, and just walked to him like a punching bag all night. But, but like I said, uh, you know, Robert did what he had to do. And he came in there, and I think he, uh, I think he looked good at the weight, and and he uh, basically did what he had to do. He, he stayed busy and kept turning them all night, and and you know fighting a guy like ID, you know, that's what he has to do. When you were watching him, uh, did you at all think that he would be your next opponent, or were you, you? I know you were just at the fight, but were you at all thinking? Yeah. You know what? He might be my my next guy. No, I didn't think so at the time. You know, at all. You know, because I was worried about my situation. You know the things I had to clear up, but um, you know, but like I said, you know, it is what it is. Time is here, and um, and uh, you know, he's here to the, the he's here at the welterweight division now, and then and he put on a good show and a good ID, 
So, you know, I'm confident that I can see you moving forward. So I respect him for that. Now, you mentioned some of the things you had to clear up with the commission. That was obviously the steroid test uh, that you failed the previous to the rematch with uh, Victor Ortiz that got canceled. I'm wondering now uh-huh. that uh, you've been licensed to fight again in California, uh-huh. um, you're, you know, what was it like for you during that period of time with the uncertainty of if you'd get a license, uh, the things that were being discussed about you being a cheater essentially, and now you have your license I'm back, a- and just, just the amount of, uh, of uh, desire and anxiousness to just finally get back. I mean, it was a – I mean, at the end of the day, it was a tough situation, but, you know, but within me and within my team, you know, we really didn't worry too much because we know we didn't do anything wrong. It was just the fact of of us coming out and proving that. And, and, you know, that's what we did. You know, we hired some, we hired some real, uh, you know, top level, you know, scientists and attorneys to really, you know, go in and check the sample out and find out exactly what it was. And we found out exactly what it was. It was contamination of very, very, very small trace, and we presented, you know, all the results to the commission, and, and you know, everything's cleared up, and we was able to move forward, but it was just, you know, just sad that we had to go through, um, you know, all of the board that we had to go through, but um, like I said, like, now we're here, and, you know, we're excited, we're happy, and um, we're ready to get back in it. All right, thank you, Andre. Uh, Robert, I'd like to ask you a couple yeah. questions. Sure, I'm here. Hey, Robert. Uh, uh, you heard him talk about. It. He said, uh, you know, that when I Dean, when you were fighting, you had a, pretty much a punching bag in front of you, and that that Andre is not the same kind of fighter as I Dean is. Uh, when you look at the the game that Andre has, do you do you view how do you view that differently in your approach than going up and wait to fight I Dean now that you're still at that weight, but now fighting what is a, a much different sort of opponent? Um, yeah, you know, A Dean A Dean did come and take some punches, but he wasn't a punching bag; he was a punching wall. Um, you know he uh he you know he's a tough guy he comes in strong and uh you know he was determined to win and the one thing that that that's hard to stop is a determined man um you know but uh you know Andre Andre Berto, like he said himself he's a different fighter um you know styles make fights and uh you know I, I'm just uh I'm happy with the style that uh that I bring to the ring because uh you know I can bring a bunch of different stuff to the ring and um. You know, making the adjustment to 147 pounds. Um, you know, I got I got the breaking in out of the way, and now it's time to. This. Andre, I mean, uh, uh, Robert. Also, um, you heard him talk a bit about getting relicensed after his uh, the drug test situation. I know when this fight was first brought up, um, I, didn't, I didn't hear it from you, but I heard it from your managers talking about that you didn't want to fight him because you felt like he was a cheat and that why should you give him the opportunity. Obviously, something changed between then and when the fight was signed. So I'm wondering if, what, what happened when you decide that this was a fight that you wanted to take, and, and uh, do you think he's a cheater? Hey, everybody's uh, guilty until they're proven innocent, and he was proven innocent. Um, you know, like he said, he hired the right. He did take to, he took the proper steps and did the right things to to get back license, and, um, you know, we go from there. Uh, um but, you know, I've been in situations with people who who have uh, been on steroids and being in the ring with somebody on steroids. So, uh, you know, we, we take real caution against that because, uh, you know, every time we step in that ring, we're putting our life in the line. And when somebody enhances, you know, they're playing with somebody's life. So do you think he's clean or do you think he was cheating? Uh, hey, who knows? Only God knows and he knows. So, um, you know, that's, uh, that's the least of my concern. My concern is to be prepared for this fight and, and to go do my job. Okay, great, guys. Thank you very much, Robert. Thank you, Andre. All right, our next question is coming from Colin Seymour from TheExaminer.com. Hello, everyone. Um, I've I've talked to Robert many times, so I'm going to direct a couple of questions at Andre. Um, The first question, Andre, is you mentioned that Robert looked good at the weight fighting Walter Wade against uh, Salkukaitin, but do you really think he's a legitimate Walter Wade who can hurt you? You know, he's weighing in at 147, so he's a legitimate one to it. Okay. Uh, do you think he can hurt you? I don't know. What now? Go ahead. Okay. Hang on one sec. Andre, we just we are having yeah. problems with your phone. So if you can just uh, find a... Just, Hello? I think it's, Is it it's still? Smart. There you go. That's much better. Just okay. stay right okay. there, okay? okay? Thank you. I got you, yeah. So the second question sir. was, uh, do you think, um, yes, he, okay, he's at the weight, but do you think he packs a punch and can hurt you? I mean, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, man, this is boxing. This is boxing. Um, you know, at any time, 
you know, any right punch, you know, can land at any right time, you know, that can hurt a fighter that you wouldn't even expect, you know. So, you know, so, I mean, so right now, you know, I don't, like me personally, no, I don't think he can. You know, but then again, like I said, it's a fight game, man. You know, it's a fight game, so anything can happen. So, you know, it's just, it's just, uh, it's thing just, uh, you know, us, what we're looking for, just going there, putting on good performances, and, you know, both of us have out of there helping. Which brings me to the second question. When's the last time you had a fight that you just thought, yeah, I really kicked butt in this fight. This is who I want to be, and this fight really showed who I am. Um, It's been a while, man. I don't think people really realistically seen, like, the best Andre Berto at all. Um, you know, I've had a lot of, you know, uh, exciting performances or one-punch knockout performances, this and that, but I have so much more to my arsenal, man, to – and, and like me, like, I'm my biggest critic. So, you know, so I, I kind of, you know, analyze myself, you know, to the max. So it's hard for me to think I really done a, really had a really impressive performance to impress me, you know. So um, what I can say is it's been a while. I don't think people seen, you know, all they can see with, with, with me yet at all. Well, good luck to both of you. Thank you much. Appreciate it. All right, and our next question is coming from Robert Howe from FightNews.com. Robert, please go ahead. Hello, um, question for uh, Robert Guerrero. I've covered you for a good number of years now and um, through all the things you've gone through up and down. And um, is it correct to, to have a sense that you seem a little bit feistier these days in the last couple of years, uh, maybe getting a little more impatient for a fight of this magnitude or – They'd be trying to ramp up some media interest and talk on the social media and all that. Um, it, are, you, are you feeling more sort of feisty and edgy and ready to get some things done? Oh, yeah, I'm always feeling like that. Um, you know, the thing is, is, you know, a lot of people are kind of befuddled because now I'm speaking up. Before, I always just did my job and sat back and, and uh, you know, waited for it to, to come my way. But, um, you know, unfortunately, if you don't open your mouth in this business and you don't talk, um, nothing gets done. So, um, you know, I, I'm starting to speak out now. And, and, and you know, it's, it's time. I've won six world championships. It's time to make these big fights. And, you know, that's why I'm opening my mouth and, and, and calling everybody out. Um, you know, I'm not the type of guy that does that, but sometimes you got to step out of your own comfort zone and go make it happen. Very good. Be well. Thank you. All right. Our next question is coming from Greg Seekins from Bleacher Supporter. Yeah, hi. Uh, this is a question for Robert. Robert, I'm uh, I'm wondering with the you know the things you've been through with your wife and with cancer, if how you feel like I'm wondering how you feel that uh, gives you perspective or how, how that influences you and you how you approach uh, a fight nowadays. Now that you're back on track and you know back in the ring full time, um, it gives you a lot of determination <laughs> to get in there and be the best and do what you love to do. Um, you know, the situation, being there with my wife, seeing what she had to go through, um, it makes you step back and look at the bigger picture. Um, you know, she was out there fighting for her life, and I have the privilege to do what I love to do in the ring and get paid for it and be successful at it. So, you know, take advantage of it. Use that. Drive and, and go out there and make it happen. That's why, uh, you know, I, I love what I do. That's why I work very hard because you can't take things for granted. You can't uh, look past anything and uh, – you know, you got to, uh, you know, enjoy the little things in life and, uh, you know, everything that comes your way. All right. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck to both of you, too. Thank you. All right. And our next, just as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. This will place your question in the order it was received. Again, that's star one on your telephone keypad. Our next question is coming from Stephen Gallegos from Title Fight. Okay, um, I have questions for uh, for both fighters. Um, I'm going to start with Andre. Andre, are you able to hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, um, Andre, um, the last year must have been a roller coaster ride for you mentally. While you haven't been in the ring, uh, have you been able to stay in boxing shape during this time? 
Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, uh, <clears throat> that's pretty much the only thing I I could do at the time. I mean, um, I mean, just like you said, man. Uh, I within this last year, it's been it's been um, you know one of the hardest years I really had to go through. Um, and 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 like I said, it it just it just definitely you know matured me just as a man. Um, you know, you just get ready for everything. Um, you know, ahead. You know, just like they always say. You know, it's always it's always a storm before a blessing, man. And and and, and I went through a hell of a storm within this last year, and 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 it just put me in perspective with a lot of with a lot of different things. And um and um and I'm just gonna wanna I'm back in I might in a position just to move forward. So so um you know me I'm blessed, family's blessed, man. We ready just to move forward and make it happen. Okay. Um, now you're facing probably the toughest test of your career when you face Guerrero. Uh, what advantages do you feel you have in this fight? Um, uh, you know, uh, you know, my advantages, I think, uh, you know, definitely you know, I have the speed and I have, I have a power advantage and just that explosiveness advantage. And, and, and you know, but again, you know, like I said, uh, you know, Robert, he's a tough fighter. You know, he's a very uh, he's a crafty southpaw. So, uh, you know, so like I said, you know, we've been putting everything into work. I've been working with some tremendous, really tremendous small work. And, um, and uh, you know, we're just going to be ready for whatever. Okay. And what do you feel your biggest weapon in this fight will be? For me? <laughs> I can't let it all out, my man. Come on now. Who are you working for here? <laughs> okay, all right. That's fair enough. Well, I do. I do appreciate that. Um, so, okay. Well, that's all the questions I have for you, Andre. And um, you know, we look to see you fight next uh, Saturday night. Best of luck to you. All uh, right. Thank you. Okay. Now I got a few questions for you, uh, Robert. Um, Robert, uh, you fought and won world titles from featherweight up to welterweight. Uh, how comfortable do you feel at welterweight? And will you stay there permanently? Um, you know, Steve, I feel I feel real good at Walter Waite. Um, who knows? You know, I got to take care of business this fight. Um, but if not, you know, I'm willing to move. Like I said, I, I'm looking for the best fights out there, and I want to fight the best to be the best. So, um, you know, right now I got Andre Berto in front of me, and that that too uh, is uh, the next best opponent for me, and I got to take care of business. So, um, you know, all the focus right now is just on Berto and taking care of that. Okay. Now, the last year has been tough uh, dealing with your wife Casey's uh, battle with leukemia. Um, how important is it uh, to have the full support of your family during your boxing career? Um, you know, it's very important. Um, you know, you have having that support, you know, behind you all the time, uh, knowing what you uh, what you're working for and and who you're working for. So, um, you know, that support right there. I mean, it, it's the biggest part of. Uh, uh, of my career is, is having a uh, you know my family supporting me through everything. All right, well you know we just uh, we want to wish you the best of luck this Saturday and um, our best wishes go out to to you and the Guerrero family. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Okay, well that's all the questions I have. Uh, look forward to seeing you next Saturday night, champ. All right, and our next question is coming from Ryan Macanana from Comcast Sports. Hi, guys. How you doing? Hey, what's up, Ryan? Good. Uh, you know, my I know I uh, spoke to you last week, Robert, uh, so I guess I, the couple questions I have, I have for Andre. Um, first of all, uh, Andre, I know you're fighting Robert. He's a southpaw. Uh, you know, a lot was made from your fight against Victor Ortiz, which was, a, which was a great fight, and I know they're two different southpaws as far as their styles are concerned. I know Robert being more more of a measured boxer, um, but, uh, you know, what lessons did you learn from the Ortiz fight? And, and... Okay. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, I know Ortiz, uh, you know, Victor Ortiz and Robert Guerrero, two different southpaws uh, as far as their styles are concerned, you know, Robert being more of a measured boxer. Um, but uh, what lessons did you learn from that fight, Andre? And, and uh, you know, how, how do you, you know, compare and contrast those those two styles? I mean, um, with the Ortiz fight, a lot of people really just they just don't know what went on behind the scenes. You know, getting ready for that fight, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't where I needed to be at all, at all for that fight. Um, 
you know, but like I said, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is and it happened. But, um, you know, there's different fighters. Of course, you know, a Victor Ortiz is more of a, is more of a pressure fighter. Um, you know, tries to back you up to the ropes and tries to, you know, bang you out. And, you know, he's more of that type of fighter. Um, you know, Guerrero is more of a boxer. Um, you know, likes to measure his opponent, you know, just like you said, and, 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 you know, just to, you know, I mean, just shut you his range and, and, and his punch output and, you know, turn you whatever he can. Um, yeah, like I say, so it's two completely different fighters. How, how do you prevent a guy like Robert from turning you, like the way he did ID? I <laughs> I don't fight like I did. Uh, you know, I did. <laughs> That's right. I did is, um, you know, I did is flat footed. Um, I did, you know, puts his block up, and you know, just like Robert says, you know, he's a, but he was a strong guy. He's a strong wall. He just walks to you and tries to, tries to, you know, bang you out. And I've seen that in that fight with um with him and I did, um, you know, but with like to turn somebody like him is, you know, it's easy to do. You know, with guy that just walks to you like that on the stage in his shell. Um, you know, so like I said, you know, different. You know, I mean, different styles make different fights, but but um, you know, I don't fight too much like I do. So um, you know, it's gonna be a different situation. Okay, and the very last question, Andre. Um, I know there's gonna be USADA testing for this fight, and obviously uh, you've gone through. You've gone through the Vada uh, process before, and you know, I was just wondering if you can compare and contrast. You know, the two the two different testing styles now that you or you know, uh, protocols now that you've done both? Um, it's pretty much the same, I think. I mean, you know, VADA, you know, like, realistically, they've, they've came probably five or six times already, um, you know, to test me to, you know, take urine testing, blood testing. I mean, you know, um, you know, VADA was, was, was more, uh, um, uh, you know, you know, every other, you know, couple of days, but, you know, I mean, um, you saw the, they've been very, um, you know, relentless on, on coming to test. You know, sometimes they came, you know, back to back, you know, like to test. So the Vada, I mean, so the Vada testing was very, uh, um, you know, relentless with it. Um, you know, Vada testing, yeah, the same way, you know, they, uh, they're great testing of, um, um, you know, companies. So I don't really have anything bad to say about it. You know, both of them do the same thing, take blood and urine, so. So it's not too much of a of a difference. Um, okay. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to see if that was, that was the end of your answer. Uh -huh. well, yeah, you, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's not too much of a difference. But, but, but man, like I said, both of the companies are very effective. Okay. Thank you very much, and uh, you know, good luck to you guys. We'll see you guys down there in Ontario. Well, I appreciate it. Again, as a last reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. All right. And Kevin, you had a question? Kevin, go ahead with your question. Oh, certainly. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, I just want to say good afternoon to both guys and good luck going into the fight on Saturday. My uh, my first question is actually for Andre. Um, Andre, you haven't fought in what's going to be close to you know 14 months uh, by the time you step in the ring with Robert on uh, Saturday night. Are you worried at all about any sort of ring rust, especially going into a fight against a guy who's a slick southpaw boxer who can, you know? give guys trouble on their best nights and you haven't been in the ring for a while. Are you worried at all about us coming into the fight? No, not really, because I've been, I'm like I said, we've been having tremendous work here. Um, and, 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 yeah, I've been working with some tremendous, tremendous South Falls. I'm in great shape, man. I've been, I'm in really good shape. So, um, and I believe if, if there is some rust, it should, you know, shake off pretty quickly. Um, you know, but like I said, I mean, um, you know, I'm ready. Um, I'm in great shape. I've been, I got some great scoring. I've been working, I've been working my ass off. So, you know, I don't think it's going to be too much of a, uh, I don't think it's going to be too much of any rush. Okay, I just have one more uh, that's actually kind of addressed to both guys. Well, I'll stick with you, Andre, first quickly. Um, it it's, wasn't that long back, Andre, that you were, you know, considered by many to be one of the top young fighters in the sport. You know, your name was mentioned up in the in the pound for pound rankings. 
you know, and then obviously you've had a very tough last year in, in your personal life and in your career. How important is it for you on Saturday night to give a big type of a performance that will get people talking about Andre Berno again the way they were not too long ago? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to be um, you know really important for me. I think um, yeah, with my style of fighting, I don't think it will take too much. Um, you know, for um, you know, for them to continue talking again. You know, right now, you know, they were going to win. That's it. I think I probably we come in there with a the win. Um, you know, everything else will everything else will come and just work into play. Because you need to understand the single boxing man. You can be the man one night and and everybody act like they don't know you the next night. But you can always just you know turn into a you know overnight star here in this boxing game. So you know, so this is. This is something that, you know, I'm not really um, you know, worried about too focused on. Um, the only thing that we're focused on on Saturday night is the win, and, and I believe everything else will play out. Thank you very much, Andre. And I just want to direct a similar question to Robert. Uh, you know, Robert, you're uh, one of those guys who's been around for a little while now, you know, kind of quietly accumulating, you know, a lot of wins, some world titles, but you haven't really had that big career-defining fight yet. Um, both you and Andre are, one, are two of those guys who are, you know, often considered to be the most, you know, avoided fighters in the sport. So I guess to flip that question to you in a similar way, how important is it for you, Robert, to uh, to establish yourself on Saturday night and make a big name for yourself with the mainstream boxing community? Oh, it's very important. Um, you know, you're just as good as your last fight. Um, you know, you always got to come out and impress. And, um, you know, that's the one thing with boxing is, um, you know, you're always coming out to look better every time you come out and, and do your job. Um, you know, the number one thing is, is going out there and getting the W, and, um, you know, that's uh, that's what we're working on. We're working on uh, on uh, going out there to get that W, whether if it's short or not. You know, it, it, you still got to keep go out there and, uh, you know, do your best and put out your best work. All right. All right. Thank you, both of both you guys, and uh, good luck to both of you Saturday night. Thank you. Hey, thank you. All right, and our next question is from Jeffrey Freeman from KO Digest. Hi, thank you. Uh, first, of all, Andre, you, you you mentioned the Ortiz fight. Uh, you said that people didn't really know what was going on behind the scenes. Um, maybe you could fill people in. What was going, what was going on behind the scenes? Why weren't you 100 percent for that fight? Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, Andre. Hello. Yeah, Hello. I mean, um, yeah, I hear you. Okay. Hello. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just a lot of things that, um, you know, it's really hard just to, you know, we're not really going to speak too much on it, but it's just the fact that, uh, you know, trying new things during training that um, that kind of, you know, backfired on us. Mm -hmm. I just say that, and 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 um, and it just uh, it just affected my body, uh, uh, you know, terribly, and and into the case that I. You know, basically had to go to the, you know, of course had to go to the hospital after the fight, and and and, and I had some um, had some severe problems that I had to get that I had to get managed and had to get uh, uh you know fixed up and had to uh, uh, make sure to get medical attention on basically. So so like I said, you know, we weren't you know 100 percent, but we still put on a, um, a tremendous fight, you know, for the fans. And and it was something that um that definitely everybody's gonna remember for a while. For sure, uh, the rematch was obviously was was scheduled to go off earlier this year. It didn't. Much has happened since Ortiz was essentially destroyed by Jose Cito Lopez. Is is a rematch with Ortiz something that's still on your agenda, or are you are you beyond that at this point? Hey, the only thing that's on my agenda right now is is Robert Guerrero. That's it. Everything else, you know, everything else can plan out how it's gonna plan out. Um, you know, but like I said, you know, after everything I went through, man, I'm just, I'm just focused on what's ahead of me and just taking one fight at a time, and um, and that's, and, and that's pretty much it. So all my focus right now is, is on Robert Guerrero. That's it. I've been eating, and sleeping, that. That's the only thing that matters to me right now. Can you, can you talk a little bit or explain why you're apparently no longer with Lou DeBella as your promoter for this fight? <laughs> um, it's not really too much to speak about on that, you know, situation. I mean, you know, Lou DeBella, he's a He's a great promoter. Um, you know, he's done you know one of the things in my career, my whole career. Um, and I think we just, uh, you know, we just wanted to make a little shift. And and and, and you know, my manager Al Heyman, you know, he definitely thought it would be a great, 
It'd be a great move and great look to go over to Golden Boy, and, and it seems like everything is playing out well. Is that a permanent shift for you, Andre? I'm not sure. We will have to see. But as of right now, you know, that whole uh, the Golden Boy team, the squad, they've been tremendous. They've been tremendous, and and, and it looks like it might be a, a nice little, you know, lasting relationship. Thanks, Andre. Just a couple of questions now for uh, Robert Guerrero, if he's still on the line. Yeah, I'm here. Hi, Robert. After jumping from uh, 135 to 147, lightweight to welterweight, I was wondering, how much confidence did it give you to find out that you could really stand your ground and fight against a strong, big welterweight like Celso Guyton? Um, You know, I always got confidence in myself. Uh, if I didn't have confidence in myself, I wouldn't even move to 47. Um, you know, it's a... Uh, you know, but it, it does reassure you. You know, you have a tough guy like a uh, like a Dean in there who's a hard puncher. You know, with both hands, wherever he hits you, it's gonna hurt. So, um, you know, to stand in there and and uh, trade with him and trade combinations with him, uh, you know, you you push yourself to the limits. You test yourself, and uh, you know that's the type of guy I am. I'm gonna I'm gonna test myself all the time I get in that ring, and um, you know, uh, you know, one of the things uh, everybody knows that uh, I could take a shot in that ring at 147 pounds. Speaking about 147 pounds welterweight, can you talk about what what your ultimate goals are in the welterweight division, and how much higher in weight do you think you can go? Um, you know, my goal is just to push it as far as I can push it, fight the best fighters that are out there. Um, you know, challenge the best fighters if I could get them in the ring. Um, right now, the the focus is uh, Andre Berto taking care of that because if uh, you don't take care of business with Berto, um, you know, it just puts a stop to your train. So, um, you know. We gotta take care of that first, and uh, you know, after that, you know, there, there's a lot of big fights there. Even if I have to move to 54, I'm I'm confident in moving to 54. Thank you to both fighters. Good luck. All right, and our next question is coming from Robert Huff from FightNews.com. Hello again. Um, just a little follow-up question for Robert. Something that Andre Berto had said. He said you know, maybe there'd be a little bit Rasta would shake it off quickly and appreciate you're not going to want to talk too much about strategy, but is it unreasonable to think you might try to get after it a little bit more very, very early on just to see where he stands in terms of the rest? Are you talking to me or are you talking to Berto? No, I'm talking to you. Oh. Um, Any sense you might oh. step on the gas a little bit more real, real, real early in the fight to see how he stands on the, on the rust front? Hey, you know, I, I said it early on when the fight got made. We're jumping on the autobahn. We're going pedal to the metal, full gas, from start to finish. That's the way I'm coming in to fight. Hey, we're going to go all the way hard. That's a good answer. Thank you very much. Are you done, sir? Okay, guys, I think that was our last uh, question. We thank everybody for participating. Uh, Robert, do you have any last comments before we get off the line here for the for the uh, media? Yeah. Hey, Berto, I'm just looking forward to that execution you're talking about. Oh. Well, what I say? <laughs> I see you've been, you've been doing a lot of barking yourself for some reason, um, but... So I really, like I say, fight night. You already know what it is. It's going to be something exciting. So, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. I'm really excited. So it's going to be good. Let's get it popping. All there's okay. to do now is just fight. Bye. All right. Well, we better get off the phone before you guys come through and start hitting each other early. So. <laughs> On that note, thanks, everybody, for joining us. And, again, please watch for your fight week schedule as activities will start uh, next Monday, November 19th, with a media workout in Los Angeles. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Good luck, you guys.